Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Shane. And Melody. And today we're coming at you from McAdow County. We're back in the Mac. That's right. We're in Welch, West Virginia. Yes. And we're going to show you, it's been a few years since we've visited this area, so show us some of the changes that have gone on. So. Yeah. And I think that some of you are going to be really surprised, aren't you? You will be, for sure. Yes. So let's get to it before we melt. All right. All right, what you see before you is the French Gratitude Train, also known as the Merci Train. You didn't know I spoke French, did you? No, I didn't. I'm very impressed. Very fluent one. Merci. Wow. Merci beaucoup. But they sent 49 of these. They're actually the World War I trains. They did it back to them, but they were sent in 1947. So this one came to McDowell County and was abandoned for a long time. Nobody even uh, took care of it. It was rusted down. The wood was deteriorated. And it was in Charleston. And back in 1994, they found it, moved it up here. And it became a remodeling project for some vocational school students. And now look at it now. It's been brought back to glory. That's really awesome. Yeah. I love it. There's not a lot of these left, but they sent these trains filled with uh, gifts and so forth. That's really neat. And most of the gifts got lost and whatnot, but there's still a few in the West Virginia State Museum. So always a neat story. I always love to see that kind of stuff and see the great relations between other countries and yeah, how absolutely. that plays in. But that's the Mail C train. I like saying that's the third time I've said that. Do you need any more? No, I think I'm good. You good? Okay, well, let's get on the road then. Well, we decided to take a unique start from the McDonald's parking lot, right? <laughs> yes. But there's a very good reason for that. <laughs> oh, uh, not uh, that we had to use the bathroom. Yeah, that too, but... <laughs> but if you look straight ahead, you will see the Correctional Center. Stevens Correctional Center. Yes. And that actually plays into Welch's population. So, in the 2020 census, the population of Welch was 3,590. In 2021, it went down to 1,914 due to the correctional facility being moved out of city limits. Holy smokes. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Speaking of which, we just entered city limits. So, that shows you how close it is. Yes. So, nothing's really changed on a day-to-day -day basis, but from a perception basis, when you hear 3,500, you think more people. Yeah. And then you think, oh, well, really, realistically, the townspeople are only, what, 1,900, you said? Yeah. Yeah, that's not it's that many. It's just that that was how many was in the correctional facility. It's crazy that they count that in a census anyway. I mean, I understand that. I agree. But for, I don't know. They do. And I guess that helps a lot of towns that have correctional facilities, like... Because a lot of times if you have more population, you get more like grant money for things and so forth. Yeah, but again, then it's, you know, there's <laughs> certain election things that go into it too. But no, That I mean, is true. Not that that's enough to sway and add another congressman or nothing, but you know. True. Just some, something not quite right about it. But anyway, getting off of that. Yes. I'm anxious to look at what Welch looks like these days because I was here just a few years ago. And I did a lot, pretty in-depth historical talk about it. Mm -hmm. Don't think we're going to rehash all that again today. So if you're interested in that, go look at our old video. You can just look on our channel and find another Welch one. We say ours, but it was before I joined the true. other with you, actually. So. True, true. Um, First time we've been here together. Yeah. Which is exciting, because you're a big fan of the Glass Castle. I am, yeah. I want to do a whole separate video on that. Well, and I got, I talked about it on my last video, and the SD card was messed up, so I had to go back and do an intro. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I mentioned it so completely fumbled the bag on that one so, well, so which is kind of funny Meant yeah, to be. I love the old buildings here and yes. um, you said it's changed a lot that's McDowell County Sheriff's Office yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely changed a lot and yeah I'm torn as we were driving up here we talked a little bit about that that they've really torn down a lot of the old buildings and so a lot of history went with it but yeah. As far as aesthetically pleasing, it is much better to look at. It does not look nearly as, uh, what's the word, gruesome? Oh, that's a pretty dramatic word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but, but it looked pretty rough before. Yeah. And it doesn't. Look, it looks much better now. Yeah, and it is an old city. It's a county seat. It is a city, and it was incorporated in 1893. So it's got some history. Oh, yeah. And Tons. we love seeing these old historic buildings. Yeah, we do. I don't know if I sound funny. I feel like I sound funny because I have like a head cold yeah. in the sun in the middle of summer. Yeah, you're a little bit That's off. just my luck. But anyways, if I sound yeah. funny, that's why. So there's a marquee cinema. That's kind of a newer theater. And then we'll go up through here. Yes. 
I love these buildings. Oh yeah, that MCMB Bank, that's, that building is oh, yeah. amazing. Love it. And then to the right up on the hill, we'll stop and take a closer look at that's the courthouse. Yeah. And it's got a lot of history with it. And we'll get into oh. that. And here is a look at the majestic McDowell County Courthouse. Not only is it beautiful, which I don't think you could even disagree, could you? No. And there's ATVs. So not only is it beautiful, but it's also very historic, as we'll see in just a minute. Yes. And not because of ATV, it has nothing to do with it. But... <laughs> okay, let's get to walking. Can't figure out for sure if it says 1908 or 1909. I'm going with 1908. What do you think? I think it looks like 1908. Yeah. But anyway, the classic great stonework here, usually done by Italians. A lot of the immigrants, the Italian the immigrants Italians. came here. The Italians, yeah. I can't swear to it here, but I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. A big part of that history that we were talking about involves Sid Hatfield. Smiling Sid, two guns. He was born in Kentucky. Sid Hatfield worked as a blacksmith and coal miner before he named being named chief of police in Matewan, which is a Mingo County, just a county over. He was sympathetic to unionization effort, efforts and he uh, joined striking miners on May 19th, 1920 in a shootout known as the Matewan Massacre with Baldwin Feltz agents. He, uh, his murder in 1921 led to the miners' march on Logan in the Battle of Blair Mountain now. He was shot on these very steps. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that once I get up them. Make sure I don't fall down here. So it was on August 1st, 1921, Sid Hatfield and Ed Chambers were murdered on the courthouse steps by Baldwin Feltz agents. There were three men affiliated with Baldwin Feltz that were charged, but they were acquitted. So nobody ever paid a price for his murder, or those men's murders. It was pretty gruesome too. They talk about how Hatfield was shot dead and Chambers and Chambers' wife ran over and begged him to quit shooting Ed, but they put another one in him just for good measure, I guess. But a gruesome thing that happened just right here on these very steps. Sad, tragic event that led to a lot of changes, especially for unionization efforts in the UMWA. Now this courthouse is just absolutely stunning. And they should be here long after we're all gone. And it was built to last. Another one of those clock towers I love so much. And here's that gorgeous, what is now the MCNB Bank. Just love that, don't you? It's a really good vantage point from up here. It really is. You can see the whole the upper, whole upper downtown, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good way to get a look at it from up here at the courthouse. Yeah. Well, let's keep taking another look, more look at this town. What do you say? Okay. And we hit a bump in the road. Yes, and to the left there was the courthouse annex. Hmm. Yeah. We've got a little sign for a circuit court judge. That's kind of a risky thing. Uh, <laughs> Somebody gets mad. Here's the Welch Daily News. There's a little bit of sadness attached to that because it finally closed permanently this year. Yeah, I mean, it was the paper for McDowell County. Right. And no longer in existence, the sign of the times, unfortunately. Yeah, mortuary, and here's the old 76 service station. And it's got a uh, trolley. trolley. Yeah. I love that. Little fella lived to be 90s. He worked out there, and I met him, and I told you this earlier, I blew it. I did not take a picture with him or interview him. I just. I don't know. I was, I don't know what I was thinking. I always thought I had more time. You didn't have me with you to tell you what to do. Exactly. So I fumbled the bag on that too. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> I blew it. Now this has been hounded, pounded and hounded by flooding. I like that old Schlitz sign. Do you see that? Yeah. Schlitz beer. Yeah, that's neat. But I came back here and probably right around, right around 2000. I can't remember exactly. I think it was 2001 when it had a big flood. We'll look at these murals closer too. Oh yeah. But. Um, and had a big flood and it was just a man it was a sad condition then was welch kind of rough back in the days 
with like drinking bars and stuff yeah it was that here's a municipal parking building too it's the first in the country and also where john f kennedy gave a very famous speech from there believe it or not but yeah it was i mean it was where it was the main hub it's where everybody came for food entertainment trouble and whatever else you needed yeah I mean, it's good, bad, and ugly, but this was the hub. I mean, it was only a little step below Bluefield as far as, uh, you know, we, everybody knew where Welch was. They knew, knew about it. Yeah. But again, a lot of this has been cleaned up, and which is a good thing. I love seeing, are you going to go back around the bridge? Because oh, I, I like to see the high that. school. No, no probably get out some but yeah. I think it's neat to see the old high school up on the hill. Yeah hopefully that'll get it from the camera here I believe so if not we'll make a way to get it in there. So. And you can kind of see the castle here. It's yeah. a church. Now. I think oh heck out of stuff the mountain what do you say? Okay. Got very pretty churches. Oh well maybe I shouldn't have done that. Well this car's about had it anyways. <laughs> We might as well take out the tank. Yeah, if all goes well, this is its last month anyway, so we'll go out with a bang literally, right? <laughs> Maybe not literally. I don't know that we'd get to a good vantage point that you could see the high school without us getting out. Yeah, so. We'll so just have to do that. Maybe. Bear with us. We're going to go up here and show you the residential area. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. Plan B. That sounds good. They have some really pretty old houses. Yeah, they do. And you can see... Like a lot of these old boomtown coal towns, I mean, they put a house anywhere you could clear land off. Mm -hmm. They were just desperate for housing. On the hillsides. And yeah, I mean, you could come up on the mountains and everything. It's just amazing to think the ingenuity they had to go into making these places. But and no parking, because I'm sure back in the day, not everybody had a vehicle, anyways. Yeah, even in like these big fancy houses. Yeah, it's the time before prominent vehicles or vehicles were so pronounced yeah. I don't think I'll go up there <clears throat> we'll go back down this way down this way but we'll show more of the town of Welch like I said if you want to hear more of the history you can check out my old video mm -hmm. I'll probably put up try if I remember which is a lot to ask of me I'll put a link to it I'll try to help him remember yeah thank you <laughs> so you love Glass Castle, right? I guess we need okay. to debate that one because, I mean, you have different perspectives on the movie. Well, we're going to do it in a separate video. Oh, one. yeah. Now, so we're setting it up. This is a teaser. Yeah. <laughs> Forget what I just said. Yeah. Because uh, I want to go by some of the places that she yeah. mentioned in the book. Well, that'll be good. Instead, we're going to do today in this video, you're, so you might want to watch about three or four or five videos we'll have from, yeah. from this Welch area. Exactly. And if you haven't read the Glass Castle, then you need to do that. Shane hasn't. He's just watched the movie. Yeah. But in his world, that's as good as it gets. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the only patience I've got. <laughs> and it might be for you, too. And that's okay. I like to encourage reading, but, you know. Apparently, this is one time was an old Budweiser plant. How cool is that? Oh, and look, that was a grocery store. It says yeah. Wholesale Groceries. Blue, that building is huge. Blue Bunny Canned Fruits. Ooh. You had, what is it? Some kind of heating? Heating, yeah. This is just, I love these old signs. Oh, and, and up on above it, it says metal workers. Metal workers. It says something company sheet metal workers. Yeah, Baxter and company. Metal How workers. cool. Yeah. Hopefully we're not get, about to get arrested, but. Tell it was, tell it was a boom town. Oh yeah, I mean, there was industry every which way. It's amazing to think that what a powerful hub this was at one time. I mean, to think that John, Kennedy, John F. Kennedy would come down here was that important? Mm hmm That it would have somebody to snake their way up through here to talk to the, the good coal miners was... Yeah. But, anyhow. So. He's a big union man, right? Well, the Democrat Party has always been affiliated with, with the union, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is kind of a conundrum now for the UMWA because obviously the Democrat Party without getting into a bunch of politics is against coal and all that but they also are pro-union so it's kind of a yeah. public. Well now you can see the high school. There you go. Yeah. 
And those beautiful churches. Right up on the hill, yeah. Beautiful. Framed churches. in perfectly by the churches. Yeah. That's the old Welsh High School. How neat is that? Yeah. Which is no longer in existence. They go to Mountain View. Is that what's called Mountain View or Mountain? I'm not Ridge. really sure. There's Ridge View and there's Mountain View. I think there's a Mountain View. <clears throat> but yeah, there's a lot of interesting architecture so forth. But at this point, it's probably about a good time for us to start stopping and hopping out. What do you think? Let's do it. Let me look at the bank. I like seeing this entrance. I, uh, an old banker myself, so I guess that's one of the reasons I'm kind of fascinated with it. Plus, I had to do business here once, so. I have a history of my own here, so. Pretty cool. Oh, I'm gonna put a couple of P.D. the Pink-Tailed Possum books in here for the children. So if you happen to be in McDowell County and need a book, come check them out. It tells a little bit more about the story of Hatfield and Chambers being killed on the courthouse steps. So as we said before, it's August 1st, 1921, Sidney, Sid Hatfield, and his deputy and friend, Ed Chambers, were at the courthouse. They're gonna answer charges from a shooting that happened at Mohawk, which is a mining camp in McDowell County. And as the men arrived with their wives by their side, they walked up the courthouse steps and they were jumped and shot by Baldwin Feltz detectives. So they killed both of them. The detectives were retaliating against Hatfield and Chambers for their involvement in the May 1 massacre where seven detectives, two bystanders, and the mayor, Cable Testerman, were killed in that shooting. So the murder of said Hatfield led to the Miners' March on Logan. The big event in the history of coal mining. And this is the widows of said Hatfield and Ed Chambers. And there's a man speaking at the murder trial. So after the shooting, Charlie Everett Lively, George Buster Pence, and William Salters were arrested and charged with murdering Hatfield and Chambers. Their trial took place at the McDowell County Criminal Court, and both Lively and Pence claimed self defense. Salters testified he was just standing by at the courthouse entrance when the shooting started and didn't fire a whip and so jurors acquitted all three of the men. Nobody was ever held accountable for those murders, unfortunately. And that's part of this little park here. The, it's right outside the courthouse down the hill a little bit. A little bit more about Isaiah Welch who was the land surveyor and civil engineer for which Welch is named. He had been a captain in the Confederate Army and he was hired by Major Jedediah Hotchkiss, a cartographer to survey the coal and timber values in southern West Virginia. So in 1873, he surveyed what would become the po po Pocahontas coal fields, or should I say the famous Pocahontas coal fields. But he was impressed by the quality and quantity of coal. They thought it might be a couple of generations before the coal could be transported because there were no major railways or anything coming in here but his findings created a lot of interest in McDowell County and he ended up purchasing 164.98 acres at the junction of the Tug Fork River and Elkhorn Creek. He bought them from John Henry Hunt and he divided the land into lots and began selling them to coal barons and entrepreneurs who built stores, banks, churches, schools, and homes near downtown and along the hilltops. The new city became a service center for the railroad and coal industries and county seat of McDowell County. And so, the city of Welch was named in his honor, Captain Welch. Pretty cool to see a picture of him, and there's his final resting place. Taking a closer look at the old 76 station, I noticed when I jumped out, there was a little, well here's a trolley too, but there's a etched in the concrete, Ed Shepard. Closed 314-1995. So that's the Ed Shepherd I remember who passed away just a couple of two, three years ago or so. He worked here until he was in his 90s working on cars. And I mean it's very recent that the roof has been gone that I that I know of. Kind of sad to see that. I mean it was like I said, it was open for business just, just a handful of years ago. One of those cool old buildings though from the date way back. And across from the service station is this mural that shows more of the glory days of downtown Welch. And it appears it was painted
painted in 2008. And if they do an updated version, they'll have to put ATVs in it for sure. And they seem to be more popular than cars down here these days. Here's the other mural just down the road. I love these. I do too. They just add... They always add something to the town. They do, and they cover up some flaws in the buildings, you know. Mm -hmm. But I love this one. Since we don't get to drive that way, I figured I'd point the camera back this way and give you a little different odd look of Welch. Yeah, you can see the Welch Bakery. Yeah. Kind of neat, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. There's a backside of some of these buildings, too. You can't really see them as we're driving, so... I figured this would be a good time to show some of that stuff. DMV. DMV. And here's the thing that I really loved, jumped out at me, was... There's the, uh, Mill Street picture. I thought you were talking about Panda Garden. Well, that too, but... Yeah. So there, the Pocahontas Theater. A little bit of a nod to the Pocahontas coal fields. Kind of good to see that. And here's the... Municipal parking garage we were talking about, parking building. And as I said before, there's a famous picture of John F. Kennedy making a speech from here, and I'll certainly share that here for everyone to see. It says, Coal Town, USA, welcomes you. They don't use this anymore for parking, and I guess it's structurally questionable with the flooding and so forth that's gone on. Well, they do use some of it, I should say, as you can see, but I don't think they go to the upper level, if I'm not mistaken. It's more of those ghost signs up there, too. So something about auto storage. I don't know what that would mean. I don't know. And this is a very another very famous the flat iron grill, the store and some script prescriptions. Can't stop here and not get a look at that, the flat iron drug store. Such a neat little building the way it's cornered off like that, very tight. Still in operation, as you can see. And here is Tyson Towers, one of the more famous buildings down through here, too. So one time it's Taylor Optical, but I don't know that that's still in business. Looks like that might be a thing of the past as well. Looks in pretty rough shape, honestly. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this look at Welch, West Virginia. We've really enjoyed our trip, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. I think it's really cool that we're standing basically where JFK stood. Yeah, this, you know, him winning West Virginia was propelled him into presidency, really. And winning the primary, so mm -hmm. big part of history right here. Yeah. Huge part. Yeah, definitely so. So there's the municipal building right behind us, and we're literally just steps away from where he was at. So, yep, really exactly. Cool. I love it. Yes. And we hope that you guys love it too. If you did, give us the thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and I guess we'll see you on down, down the, the road. road.